Hello everyone, this is Jeffrey GT97 and welcome to the video. Uh, today's episode is we'll be using the Nissan Fairlady C08 at Tokyo Expressway. Uh, to show you guys the car and not to get the cars confused, there's two different uh, Fairlady C's. Uh, but to quickly show you where to get the car, uh, you're going to click on Brand Central at the very top. After that, you're gonna then click the Asia Pacific tab, all the way to the far right, and you're gonna click on Nissan. Should be beside Toyota and Honda. Click on Showroom, and we'll be using the Fair Lady C C3408, the yellow car, uh, not the red car. Uh, just to give you guys a difference, uh, here's the Fair Lady C version S, the cheaper version, and then this is the version that we'll be using for the video. Um, with this car, about 515 stock performance points, um, costing you just a little bit close to 44,000 credits, uh, has decent horsepower of 331 horsepower, under 300 torques, uh, uh, torque per pound, and over 3,300 pounds, so it's pretty bulky uh, for it to be a car. Uh, show you guys now the engine swap, uh, but we go over here to GT Auto uh, you can tell at the bottom of the screen the engine swap is 600,000 credits so we're gonna go here and just click on it uh, the engine itself is the VK 45 DE dash GT dash R uh, so if you want to get get a chance to pause the video and check and see if you have it for your tuning parts you can um, if you're not level 50 that's what I recommend doing but if you're level 50 like I am uh, you can just buy it for 600,000 credits or 600,000 credits um, my only good buffs throughout the whole engine package uh, so we're going to install this engine right now and that is basically is the first step uh, with this build uh, this is going to be a stock body car so it's not going to be wide body but stock Alright, now to show you guys the livery that I'll be using with this car. Uh, you basically can use any livery you want, but if you want to copy what I'm doing, this is basically it right here. Uh, very simple, it's like a special Nismo uh, livery. I really like how it looks. It looks really nice. Uh, I mean, it, it looks like something you see like in a car meet. Uh, that cream white color. Uh, with the little red, red trim and the little uh, blackness to it as well um, especially the rims they also look amazing with this car as well so I'll be showing you guys the two parts that's in this livery itself it's pretty much 95% standard the only thing that's different is the rims and the rear wing so I'll show you guys that next uh, so for the livery parts uh, we're going to start off with the rims and uh, like I said it's only just two parts uh, with this livery so it's Ray's versus Strigia uh, Triana rims looks very nice on the car it just looks so good um, so if you guys are curious what the stains are everything is standard uh, for the rims pretty simple and then the last part is the wing itself Everything else is standard. It's type A. And that is basically is it for the livery. Uh, if you're curious for the roll cage, uh, it's standard. Uh, if you're just wondering um, what the roll cage was. So just the rims and the wing, and that's basically it for the setup. And now here we are with the setup. As you can see, we got our new engine to the far left in the green font. Uh, the tires I'm going to be using is going to be sport hards uh, with this episode. Suspension I'm going to leave it normal. Uh, so is the differential is going to be normal as well. The rear downforce is going to be 170 uh, all the way to the right. Uh, you will have the full control computer uh, set to 100. Uh, fully customized manual transmission set that to the 340. Uh, high RPM turbocharger and that is basically it for the setup so just a few parts and that's basically it alright just give you guys a quick look at the car this car is 
really, really fast on the straights. Uh, you can see very pushing over 200 miles per hour. Actually going over 210 uh, before we get to our first breaking point. So this car is really, really strong on the straights as we're all the way up to fourth place uh, and not even really quite yet past the first turn and now we're finding ourselves in to the podium spot in third spot so this car is very quick has really good acceleration uh, the handling wise if you're curious uh, the car does feel a little bit tight um, handling wise uh, since you have the top speed you're sacrificing speed with handling uh, but it still feels pretty comfortable drive um, it will take you a few tries to get used to the car what I do recommend doing is through the city district just to be in fourth gear that way you have control on the car um, as you can see we're making just a little bit of ground on the Subaru uh, almost lost it right there uh, you will from time to time have the rear end step out and it will get loose uh, but other than that it's a really good build uh, using this car um, as you see that's the Honda the leader the Subaru and then here we are so we're gonna make a run right here on the Subaru since this is a mini straight we're gonna get some slipstream and then we're gonna make a move right here on the right side make a move under braking uh, we unfortunately do make contact with the Subaru and unfortunately that little small contact that we had with our left rear fender with its right front fender uh, will surprisingly cost us the clean race bonus I don't know why but it did um, but anyway that's the end of the first lap so all the way to second place and it was a two minute and 22 second run so pretty good good start with the car you can just see that we're already past 210 to 15 miles per hour in the straight will easily pass the Honda for the lead and will basically break away from the whole field um, as we make some good laps uh, we're going to fast forward to lap 7 uh, you can see the tires are in rough shape uh, this is the lap we're going to pit only for tires uh, we don't need fuel uh, for the car we only just need tires and you can see we're just over a second down compared to our fastest lap on lap 5 uh, so I do recommend paying a lap 7 if you can't make it lap 7 to make it lap 6 um, but like I said we're going to come here and just get some fresh tires we don't need fuel so this is going to be a, just a quick pit stop and when the tires did get worn uh, it did feel a bit tighter uh, but that's about it alright fast forward into the lap 10 um, as I'm going to show you guys now the fast lap of the race uh, at this stage of the race, this is when the tires were at its prime. So the straightaway, you'll be going over 220 plus. You're going to break right when you approach your first uh, checkpoint. You're going to break, and I recommend just running in the third gear for your first turn. I ran a bit wide uh, in that first turn, but able to get some extra straight line speed to there. You're going to break, let coast till you're halfway through the apex and get back to the power. Uh, through here you should be at fifth gear. Uh, when you approach the bridge just break a little bit, let gravity take control, just let it cruise just a little bit and then halfway through the turn get back to the throttle. Break through here again, downshift to fourth, uh, back to the power and then break once you hit the 50 meter uh, sign. So here you'll be fourth gear throughout the rest of the uh, district uh, except for here will be fifth gear and then back down the fourth gear and then through here you know break when you hit the 50 meter sign halfway through the apex get back to power and you can see you were up for a good bit break again has been made contact with the viper uh, fourth gear through here you know break a little bit and then get back to the power halfway through the apex and then all the way down to the double right hand turn uh, we'll be braking once we approach the 200 meter sign uh, you'll be going all the way down to second gear uh, stay close to the curbs and on the dry part of the track slowly get back to the throttle all the way to the power left 
left throttle just a little bit once you hit the curb, just to keep the car straight. Back to the full throttle, and that's basically as a hot lap through Tokyo. So this car is very quick. Uh, incredible straight line speed, as I mentioned. Uh, and not too bad for handling itself, too. It's just a little bit tight, but it makes up for it. Across the line, it was a 207.3. As we cross for the last lap, for the last turn, we're going to lap the Lamborghini. Carefully avoid the Lamborghini, and then make our way through our last lap. So overall, the car was very quick. It was really good to drive. Felt really good driving it behind the wheel. Uh, very quick through the whole race. Uh, no big issues over overall the car. Just a little bit tight once the tires do lose wear. Uh, so just to keep that in mind when you do this run. So we cross the line, it's going to be a 2614. So that's pretty, i say that's pretty good for this car. Uh, just a little bit behind the Mitsubishi GTO Twin Turbo, uh, just by a few seconds. Uh, but I think this was a pretty good run with this car. Uh, like I said, 550000 for the uh, credits we earned since we made contact with the Subaru in the first lap. And I really didn't, couldn't even feel any contact, so that such a shame that happened, but sometimes it does happen. And you don't really realize it till it does. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Um, hope this will help out at your Tokyo grinds. I hope the setup helps out as well. Um, I just really liked how it felt. The car felt decently good uh, driving it, so it was pretty fun. Um, so again, hope this helps. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And if you guys want to check out my last episode I did yesterday using the Ferrari F40, you can click on the video right there. If you guys enjoy what you saw today, I want to turn on subscribe, turn on the bell on for notifications. That way you guys can keep tabs on my community post and when my videos do drop. Again, hope you guys have a great rest of the day, and I'll see you guys later. Take care.